that was a bit of my busy then trying to get that done. So I expanded some of the brackets and then rearranged it and it ended up with a quadratic which was the 9n squared plus 15n minus 4.96 and it gave me n is 2299 half 9 and n is 24. It has to be an integer so n is the limit. <sighs> right, sum to infinity we're getting there. So the idea of this is that the term, as that term gets smaller, the sum eventually hits a certain value. And this only works if the number gets smaller. So to make the number go smaller, the R value has to lie between plus or minus 1. This formula is on the formula sheet. It's nice at just sticking numbers in. But R has to be between plus or minus 1 to make it work. Right then. So, just very quickly, let's see. So for this one, A is 1. If I do the second term divided by the first term, R is a third. So for this one, r is less than that, it's in that plus or minus 1 region. So this will be, so the numbers are getting smaller, so it's convergent. So that's good. So I can find the sum to infinity. So the sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r. That's the sum to infinity formula. So it's 1 over 1 minus a third. So that's 1 divided by 2 thirds, that's 3 and then 2. So let's have a look at this one then. So a is 2 and r is 2. So that's divergent, the numbers are getting bigger. Oops. So I can never get to a point where the term gets that small, but when I'm adding it onto the sum, it doesn't make a difference, which is what the sum to infinity is. That when the term gets that small, that the sum doesn't change. So that one has no sum to infinity. And that's because r is greater than 1. So let's have a look at this one then. So a is 24, r is minus 2. The, the numbers are getting smaller. Oh, I see. There's so much I need to move. Oops. Copying off wrong. That's minus a half. Oops. There. So do minus 12 divided by 24 hours minus a half. That's fine. The numbers are getting smaller, so I know it's converging. I definitely need it to stop recording. So I've got 24 over 1 minus a minus a half. So that's 24 over 3 over 2. So that's 48 over 3. So that's 16. So look at this next one then. So a is 2, r is minus 5. So it's got, it kind of bounces, it gets massively big. Um, so that was divergent. If you were to graph them, like if you graphed the values, that that value from 1 just kind of goes down. Whereas this one, that value from 2, goes up. This one's quite interesting. So it starts off at a big number, and then it starts going smaller and smaller and smaller. Whereas this one starts off at a small number, and bigger and bigger and bigger. If you were graphing the values. Uh, right then, have I messed with anybody's heads with this? I'm very sorry if I have. Right. Let's have a look. Let's work out what the first couple of terms are then. So if I put k is 1 in, it's 6 times a half to the power 0, so that's 6. If I put k is 2 in, it's going to be 3. If I put k is 3 in, it's going to be 3 over 2. So that means that I know that a is 6 and r is 2. Oh, I've done it again. R is a half. Oh, my God. A to the whole. 
So I had work having a whole summer off and then coming back to do some recording. Uh, so I was sum to infinity, which is what that's telling me, from 1 to infinity, is a over 1 minus half. So 6 over a half is 12. And, uh, I've got a couple more examples. Um, <laughs> And then a big problem solving one, which I'm about to stop. Right, so the second term is minus 4. So u2 is minus 4. The sum to infinity is 9. So let's make some equations. So ar is minus 4, and a over 1 minus r is 9. So what shall we get rid of then? Shall we get rid of A or R? So A is minus 4 over R. So if I replace this A here, it's an A not a 9, I've got minus 4 over R, 1 minus R is equal to 9. Now, I don't know if you remember from, actually from primary school, uh, you kind of did this fraction divided by a value where you put both of them on the bottom. So oh, that's r lots of 1 minus r is 9. So then if I take up the, the bottom line, So that gives me a quadratic, which I'm hoping you've solved right. So it gives me r as minus a third, or r is four thirds. Now the issue is, remember, that r has to go between plus and minus one. So r is minus a third. So now it won't, so I've got so show that there's only one possible value of common ratio. Yeah, I've got that. And find the corresponding first term. So a is minus 4 over r. a minus 4 over minus a third. a is 12. There we go. I'm on seven minutes. Do I do this next one? Do I chance it? Right. Uh, let's have a look at this one. <sighs> so using this formula, if n is 1, it's 48 over 4, which is 12. If n is 2, it's 3. And then 3 quarters. So what have I got then? So I've got a is 12 and r is um, a quarter. So I'm subbing n values in there from terms, and I can see it's geometric. I want the sum from 4 to infinity. So I want the sum to infinity, all of them. I want to start at the fourth term, so I take off the plus 3. Right then, so the sum to infinity will be 12 over 1 minus a quarter. And minus the sum of the first three terms, where r is a quarter, so 12. 1 minus a quarter to the power 3 over 1 minus a quarter. Stick that in my calculator and hopefully, 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 it actually gives me a quarter out as an answer. There. I don't think I made a mistake on that one. Well done, Dave. Right, so that's that bit done. There's a big problem solving one, so I'm going to stop the video there and do the problem solving.